At last year at Rolls-Royce, we have articulated our ambition on how to lead the transition to net zero by 2050. And there are different elements, right, substantiating that ambition um, on the path of taking us there. And you already mentioned um, electrification as absolutely one of the core elements of our strategy, where we do believe that pure electrical flying will indeed enter the market rather on the, slow, on the lower segment, side of the segment, right? So eVTOLs, where we have a very strong partnership with, uh, with the vertical. And also on the commuter segment, you mentioned PVOLT, absolutely our partnership with Technum, our customers, Vitero, will be visiting us uh, shortly to indeed um, uh, reinforce uh, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, highlight our partnership yes. on that segment. When it comes Russia. to more the, uh, the wide bodies, there's different technologies we are pursuing. Yes, I wanted to talk about that because the technology, it seems, is still being developed and it's still being refined. So if it's all about scaling up, at what point do you think clean energy propulsion solutions will become commercially viable for Boeing, Airbus in the narrow body jets category? So there's, it's definitely a important to underline that we're talking about different technology pathways which we need to continue developing concurrently and coherently to take us to that ambitious target of net zero by 2050. There is no one size fits all approach. So definitely it's all a matter of time scales. We have a solution now on the short term which is uh, sustainable aviation fuels both biofuels and a longer term synthetic aviation fuels, synthetic kerosene, our um, propulsion systems are already certified to fly with a blend up to 50% of SAFs. And uh, we are looking to 2023 to have our Trent family certified to fly 100%. Uh, SAF, right? So that is absolutely a short term solution which can become a very virtuous circle, right? If to produce SAF you use CO2 drawn out of the environment and green hydrogen. On longer term, of course, provided we would have batteries with the adequate energy density, we could tackle segments going beyond the commuter segment. And we're exploring, of course, the potential of hydrogen as well, which can be uh, combusted through modified gas turbines or used to operate fuel cells, which then are connected to an electrical propulsion system. And that would really be uh, a pathway to um, go to zero CO2 emissions. Hi, I'm Emily Tan and thanks for watching CNBC. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more. Thanks for watching.